everybody. Welcome to the stream. And of course, we're back here at pre-market. That's right. We're talking pre-market now instead of post-market for at least this week. So it's pretty exciting to be back on the pre-market. I hope you are all enjoying it. I hope everyone's having a great day. And of course, if you can smash that like button right now, it does help us out. Plenty of stocks to go through here and plenty of things to check out. We've obviously got a market coming in around flat, slightly up on the S&P. It's been down during the day, during the Asian into European sessions, and they've recouped. If I was to say what's the standout of today, I would say iron ore. I would say steel. That type of trade has been pretty solid over the last couple of days. I would also think that crypto has actually made some pretty big movements. I tweeted about it a little bit earlier. If you haven't followed us, follow us over at FX Evolution. And I posted here a few things. BTC shorts declining heavily over the last week while Bitcoin held firm. And then on top of that, we've also got Ethereum moving out. We have Bitcoin moving out. And one of my favorites at the moment, the old uh, IOTX, one of my mates put me onto this one, just went boom today. That was pretty good. So yeah, I wouldn't chase it, but obviously good formation base. Nice little single day. And if you think Ethereum's improving, probably the alts are going to do okay as well. And this one got some extra volume through it. So it is a bit of a crypto day. It is a bit of a mineral miner day. And it's going to be kind of tough here, you would think, for some tech. Specifically, the tech that did well or that's coming in good is actually going to be the Chinese technology and we've got some to look at today for sure uh, there. But did anyone notice what's happening with these yields? US two-year yield, let me just repeat this, 2.17%. Woo! US 10-year, 2.34%. So that's 2.34% 10-year, 2.17% two-year. And every time this two-year goes up, it tends to be beating the 10 year in terms of percentage for the day 2.4 versus 2.05 gets us a day closer to the fabled of course canary there which is going to be uh in yield inversion we haven't seen that in a while and well, i hope we kind of don't but we'll find out so look there's plenty to go through let's just start with these markets we'll start off with the us 100 you would think oh high yield shouldn't we be going down Hey, markets at this stage don't seem to care too much. They're just doing whatever they feel like. And I think this is more of what we need to understand as investors and traders that this is the year of the trader. There is a good chance that whether it does this and this or whether it just goes like this, that there will be a dip later on this year. Why? It's sick. It's really sick. Bonds didn't crash for a reason. They were for no reason. They're crashing for a reason. TLT is getting destroyed. I mean, look at TLT. Oh, it's down low. Now, I don't use this as an overall indicator, but certainly going down low. And you can say, well, that's because, of course, yields are going up. For sure, that's one big thing. Look at the court bonds, though. Court bonds, the health of the economy dropping. Now, I don't quite use this indicator myself all the time to find out strength or weakness, but certainly is part of it. Sandollar 77 coming in with a $4 super sticker. Great to have you here, Sandollar. Appreciate it. Very, very nice. Thank you very much, sir. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit sick here in the morning. That being said, the market is actually finding strength. Could I see it drop back still? Yeah, I think it's going to show some of the signals of a trap if it's going to do it. The problem with these markets is when you look at these in the morning and you come in, you go, okay, where are we? Where are we? And you get excited. And then the market closed and opened at the same position, which is basically what's happening here. It's not telling us much about direction. What it does tend to do is it means that there's probably going to be some form of trap direction in the morning. Now, if you're good at spotting traps, you'll have a good trade day. If you're bad at spotting traps, you'll have a bad trade day. <laughs> That's usually the, the general gist of these types of things. Uh, Gary Sony says, he, I use TLT and JNK. Uh, yeah, fair enough. I mean, that's obviously a combo there. Uh, there are other ones that I think work incredibly well, but yeah, I'll leave that for 
of the mentoring session stuff. Uh, basically here, US 500, here we have the resistance. You know that 4480 is a big deal here in the markets. It's doing its little kind of movement around very tight range here on the futures market. Let's compare this with the real market, okay? So what I like to do is I like to look at the futures and I like to look at the real market. Is the SPX coming into today? Let's just grab this. We will go through some stocks a little bit later in the session. So we'll start off here with the indices, talk about the broad market. Then we'll go into a couple of stocks that we're looking at, base formations, all of the good stuff that we do here for the intro and to the pre-market. So it's, it's going to be a pretty good day. So 4461. Now, did the real market hit 4480 resistance? Yes, it did. Yesterday, it hit that level. Okay, important. Where are we opening? Just around 4480. If it breaches 4480, what kind of traps are we looking for? One of the traps that sometimes you can see is the old rejection candle on a smaller time frame, the old pin bar, the shooting star. Yeah, that's one of the traps. The other thing that could happen is it breaches. And if it does breach, the market tends to come back and retest, allowing the scalper, allowing the day trader back into the market. So if you get the breach and it confirms, the pullback does tend to occur and then the turnaround occurs. So that's a very key level to be watching here. You would think this 4480 is a little bit of a, the sniffing it out as a problem zone. Even the futures market on the left-hand side, it's showing that there's a little bit of weakness coming in right now in the futures. So you would actually think, if I was looking at this chart, let me go down to a one-minute chart here or five-minute. If I was looking at this chart at this stage, if I was scalping, theoretically, I'd be looking at this and saying, well, is that making a series of lower peaks? Is this looking weak? A scalper might say, yes, it is looking weak. It's not looking very good, is it? Around our nice resistance of the previous day. Now, that's just the way that you kind of approach markets, but certainly a very key zone for us to be watching. And I think a lot of people will be looking at it. We'll continue to come back to it. From a more of a swing slash day trader looking for actual real weakness in the market, unfortunately for you, outside of the little scalpy kind of business, you're going to be needing it to either show you a clear rejection of one of the zones, e.g. some kind of liquidity grab where it dumps, picks up, sells off, that kind of thing, or you're going to need it to actually find a new low from yesterday. Now, if it does that, what, what ends up opening up? Well, you end up opening up all of those good levels we've talked about. You obviously open up the 44, uh, 4,400 very easily. On the NAS, you might open up those really significant lows. I'm not too sure whether we're going to get that today. The market's coming in very flat. It's going to be tough. You'll have to spend the first hour of the market, possibly even in the pre-market here, we might start to see some direction. But I think the real market's going to show us the direction. And I know it's not very helpful. Problem is, that's where we're at. We're sitting in this stupid flat zone. So let's have a look here at what everybody's saying. Thank you again to Sandola. Appreciate your support. Tab G says, I hedged my stock portfolio with TLT. Stock gains have been offset by TLT losses, or am I doing it wrong? So you're buying the stock. Oh, you're hedging with TLT. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't hedge with bonds personally. Bonds stink. Do you use them more as an indicator into the markets? I don't like trading bonds very much. I do not like trading bonds very much. It's hard to get hard to get a very good edge. Remember, bond traders are really smart. They've got big brains. It's very tough for us to beat them. Terry M says, surely there'll be a pullback soon. Look, you'd think so, but again... I think it's been more about just grabbing certain stocks that are in trending market right now that are doing well during this crisis or during this period. Uh, even yesterday, there was some pullbacks in some stocks like Square came down to the level we talked about in the uh, private hangout on Monday. It actually came straight into that zone. Pretty good. Not bad pickup, a couple of percent there by the end of the day with the chance uh, SE also pulled back pretty hard. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. So look, you can say surely it'll pull back. That's more of we're hoping it'll pull back. It makes sense, but you know, does the market always do what you want it to do right now? If you look at this chart coming into today, we've got a rejection 
followed by a rally. We've got a hit on the 44.80, followed well after after obviously some sell off during the day. This zone is clearly the fight area. 44.80, big deal. Brent Masenko, two dollars. Glad to see you back in the pre market, Tom. Thanks very much, Brent. Appreciate it. Also, guys, just do give us a bit of a like if you can. Smash that thumbs up button because we're doing the first pre market show here, and I haven't really been doing lives. Uh, last week because we were at the conference. It's uh, it's going to be need the algo to know that you're enjoying the content. Uh, Eli says, I got chopped around yesterday in markets. Fair enough. There was only really one solid position I could see in the morning and it was it was around this particular rejection. You saw a rally, you saw a rejection sell there and it had that, that little bit of follow through, but there was still a lot of chop. I mean, even if you'd gotten into this position, you would have been looking for a lot more. So, you know, here it doesn't excite me on that kind of trade. And that's, that was like one of those break-even trades. You know, I actually stayed up yesterday looking for it. That was something I definitely traded. Yeah, it got a little bit scary, but whatever. That's that's trading. That's how you do it. You get your stop loss, get your take profit. And again, this is the zone that people are going to be looking at today for the session. They're going to be looking for weakness around here. If the market rallies and then dumps at around this zone, I think it will be a relatively good signal towards the short side. If the market busts this 4480, I think you've got to get the perspective that if it busts and keeps busting, someday through some point through the intraday, it's probably going to come back. And when it does, you might have to fall into line with, with the new world order of it's going up more. Uh, Randy Savage, good name. Did I miss the dip entry point? Wanted to scoop up some AAPL. Oh, look, it depends on how long your, your time horizon is for your AAPL. I would say that we have a strength period here in the market that makes absolutely no sense, like irrational almost. I mean, we've got a 2.17 US two-year yield and a and a 10-year that's 2.35. It's ridiculous. But look, the chance of a dip later on this year, incredibly high. Whether it happens like really now, uh, the only reason I'm feeling bullish at this point is just because so many downward trends, so much technical analysis is saying bullish, bullish, even though, you know, it goes against your common sense. The reality is trading isn't common sense. Markets can stay irrational longer than you can remain solvent. People tried to short the dot-com bubble, very smart people. They got destroyed. And that and that's the kind of problem that does happen here. You know, this is the this is the reality of our lives. We we trade these markets, and our opinions mean very little. Really, we're trying to trade the price action and the momentum. So I think if you're scared of this market right now and you're scared of things, you've got to go into individual stocks and say, okay, well, what are the charts showing us? So I've got a couple of little accumulation scans that I thought I'd just go through. And these are just ones that I grabbed using one of my techniques. Uh, and I was just looking at them this morning. Now, they're not all hitting today, but I just want to show you some recovery style plays. So here we've got whatever the hell this is, ABTR. Uh, it's a chemical speciality company. Not saying there's much going on. A little bit of volume recently, obviously a base, obviously a level that could be of interest later on this week. Totally different sector to what most people will be doing. Then we've got another one that's looking pretty good, 3M. Wow, this stock has failed. In fact, it has been an abomination. One of the worst stocks in the market that I can think of for quite some time, got particularly thrashed during 2022, really thrashed here. Now, what does everybody know? So I'm going to ask the chat this. What do you notice about current price action down here and an indicator that I have on the chart? Bounce, double a bottom, double bottom, more volume. There we go. So Gamu says more volume. Yeah, absolutely. Look at the volume. The volume has been relatively heightened. It's one of the things I often look for when I'm looking at bases after an absolute horror. I mean, effectively, this is capitulation. Like people, 
I mean, I know you're probably not interested in 3M and you're like, Tom, I don't care, man. I want to trade Tesla, bro. Tesla, 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 Tesla. Yeah, I know. But these are the things that you don't always have to. I think you've got to realize, and hopefully people are starting to realize, that it's not just all about tech. Tech's your investment. Sure, I get it. I totally understand. It's great. But when it comes to trading, you've got to bring out your, your pairs. The best traders in the world don't even really care what pair they're trading. They just go and trade pairs and they don't have an opinion on the particular stock. Why would they care so much? They don't. They will trade in the price action and the market psychology. So you have relatively good volume down here. Interesting. We also have some of the things I like to see, which are these little bullish little candles recently coming off the base, showing a little bit of strength. We've got the long leg doji. We've got the 20 moving average. We've got the capitulation, which is a pretty big weakness that's come into this market. Now, it's, it's only up 0.28. It's not one of those stocks that moves 20% in a day or anything like that. But it's just one of those more solid kind of telltale lows that if you get breaches of things like this coming in with the story that is relatively good and the volume and all of those things, they become fairly decent. And someone mentioned the gap over here. Absolutely. But when this thing eventually does go back to some form of rally, which eventually it will. Remember, it's been failing here for quite some time, unfortunately, as a company. But if this stock does break out, yeah, it could have a couple of good days of trade on it. Do I want to hold it as an investment? No, I don't. That's not the way I would look at this. But the volume here reminds me very much of other positions that I've traded with other concepts involved as well. Now, this is a little bit balked because of everything that's happened. But look at this. This is BHP, a massive iron. I've bought this up several times. Why? Because it's a very similar concept. You've got an increased amount of volume compared to the left-hand side at a base. What's that telling you? Some funds probably picking it up. It's a strong kind of position. That's the kind of thing that ends up happening. So if you ever see that type of thing, hey, you know, you could you can pay some attention to it. There's a couple of other good stocks that I've I've noticed recently that have been very, very solid. Uh, one of them is John Deere. Again, I can't make sense of the fundamentals. I cannot make sense of them, considering what it is. Elevated volume recently, incredible trade off the 17th, in my opinion. Yes, there's more percentage in other stocks, but still, this one has that lead through. And this is up probably in the pre-market today, I would say. But look at that. It's quite a decent breach. You've got to be careful of the false break. Obviously, it could still be a false break, but it does have the right types of closures above it. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, this is now sat for most of 2021 to 2022, it's a relatively defensive sector against crashes in the S&P right now because of the sector that it actually benefits from, which is currently all these minerals, all this food, all these other elevated things with inflation. There could be a, a chance here that this actually does improve. I can tell you right now, one thing about John Deere is that if you order one of their tractors, welcome to the world of paying a lot of money. Welcome to that world. KZ, no limit, Australian $2.99. What a pleasant sight to see you back in the pre-market, Tom. Thank you very much, KZ. Appreciate it. Thank you. J Bub says shops bottom at looking like 3M2. Well, we'll check that out. So this is just another one, just deer. You can see these types of things are what you're looking for. Now, if you can find one and share it with the community, that's always great. But these are the types of things you're looking for. Another one is, that's a little bit annoying. It's up a little bit now. It's flat to down before. So it's like things like Nucor here, like a steel company. Now it's up a lot. You might say, well, geez, what the hell are you talking about going into something like this? This looks mad. Yeah, it looks pretty crazy, but you've got to remember you're trading with a stop loss. Why do you care where the price is currently? What has it done recently? Two little bounce buy-offs, little breakout here. Good trade yesterday, by the way. Anyone that was in Nucor or Steel or Iron, fantastic positions, if you could see them early. So, yeah, and now the interesting breakout, price exploration of what these are doing. And I like price exploration because after some kind of range for a little bit, even if it's a couple of days, when you start to get into price exploration, new breaks, they can sometimes run for a little while, which is quite nice. 
Got a new member coming in, Flawless Detail. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Flawless. Thank you also to the 500 plus people here for the pre-market open. Do appreciate your support very much. So these are just some of the things. I mean, obviously there's other stocks here. You can just see what, what kinds of uh, things are going on the last couple of days. You can probably see why I've got them in the scan, 20 moving averages, little bit of uh, volume increase. I like that kind of thing. 20 moving average, bouncy bounce on the on the last two days. You get the follow through all of a sudden. I don't know what this is. Speciality stores, retail, auto parts. All right, cool. Does it have a clear issue for me? Absolutely. Is there a clear potential for a day trade? Yeah. Would I be looking at it? Yeah, maybe from a TA perspective. But these are the types of things I do scan all the time. And I don't like to just be necessarily pigeoned into just technology. I think a lot of people here are probably pigeoned into tech. So with that, let's go into some technology and talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Flawless Detail says, Tom, what do you think of 10X Genomics TXG? It's Kathy Wood's play. Old Kathy Wood. 10X Genomics. She has quite a few uh, genomic stocks in her fund. So one thing I don't like so much about genomics sometimes is the cash burn. I think we need to come to the reality that the big problem with bio is generally the cash burn. Yeah. I'm bullish on the bio concept, but as you know, I can't pick any one company. I'm just not good enough to know which one's out. I'm, I don't specialize in it. I'm not a doctor. I have no idea. So I usually basket if I go for them uh, at this stage. Mm, it's at resistance is what I would think. I mean, it could breach out, but it's at resistance. It's currently in a uh, fairly significant downtrend. Maybe put like a log scale on like I've got here. Good for trend lines, log scales. And here is a, uh, you know, the downward trend. So I'd probably want it to break through that 20 moving average, which it's currently struggling with. Other than that, yeah. Andrew says, can I play the money song? Uh, we'll do that later on this week. Don't worry, I'll bring it back. Derek, four with a million zeros, four, HK25. Nice to see the live is back. Thank you very much, Derek. Appreciate your support as always. Eternal Flame says, welcome back to the fake market, Tom. It's been a while and good to hear from you again. Thank you very much. And uh, Boo Boo Lemelin says, New core or Alcoa is strong. Yes, yes, it is. So Alcoa has been phenomenal as well in recent. Like that's been incredibly strong. Aluminium is actually an incredible play, and people that pick this up, and even I didn't pick this up enough. Like I didn't have these types of positions. There is a reason why this is so good, and it's just gotten every single headwind of gloriousness you could think of. Aluminium has to be smelted a lot in the world's movement towards green energy. And that's a huge portion of why this is this is going up like massively, plus on top of that inflation, plus on top of that government. Uh, you know, it's just been a phenomenal thing. And I'm not even sure where it stops. I have no idea. It's just, it's really a strong play. You've got big trend line on it too. I'm pretty sure this has a fairly strong trend line that's gone through a little bit here. So yeah, it's a great trade. I mean, it, it or more of an investment probably than anything else. All right, let's have a look at some of the things that you guys are suggesting. We'll go through plug to start off here. All right, so plug. Yes, we did do this one, I believe last week is a double bottom when someone asked about in the close. Ah, uh, yeah, I think it looks okay. Let's get rid of all these lines. I don't know why they're there. That resistance, fair enough though. So yeah, I think it looks all right. A uh, little daily kind of long leg doji, a breach past this will probably start it. The good thing about plug that you always have is crazy stock twits, people. When plug goes, everyone gets excited. <laughs> so it does tend to have good runs on it when, it when it runs through. It's got a double bottom. That's decent, I guess. Let's take a look at Barber. Yep, a lot of Chinese stocks doing quite well today in the pre-market, up 9.54% sitting at 113. So these stocks really benefiting from this supposed government intervention. I'm not sure what they actually said, if they've said anything, but I think the algorithms didn't really get this wrong when they went ballistic on these stocks. 
it's they are hard to invest in for me, but certainly as a trade, when the US, oh sorry, when the Chinese government gets involved in it and they're so oversold, the capitulation was so extreme. This is really just a multi kind of day trade. Where does it stop? I think it'll have some problems, probably around that 137, 135 area. But uh, yeah, pretty, pretty extreme action. Speaking of extreme action, we'll bring up what's actually moving today. So let's just do a quick pre-market check here on some of the large caps that are moving. We've got 466 companies here. Let's have a quick look. So pre-market up, good. Barber, JD, Nike, Pin Duo, 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 Duo. I thought they only sold, sold toilet paper of Pin Duo, Duo. Uh, SEA, SEA is doing all right. Very good. Happy with that one. Managed to snaggle a little bit of that. Though it is a risky play, they burn cash out like it's not. Out, it's going out of fashion. A few iron ore companies doing all right here. Spotify. Let's have a look at the negatives. So we got Okta, pretty big negative here, seven point four four. Block down one point eight eight. Probably the story of the last week. Blocks big move. That's Square. And I don't think there's really anything else. Semiconductors down a little bit. Kind of just, yeah on those ones a few things like proctor and stuff going as well let's have a quick look at pg for a second here i haven't looked at pg in a while proctor ah interesting yeah i can i hate sometimes when the market gaps like this look at that though damn look at that bang 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 why can't it just go in the normal market where are we opening 140 oh 152 40 is not too bad then yeah, that's pretty strong price action actually coming off the Proctor. We've got one buy, strong buying, strong buying, strong buying, basically breaching it this morning. Relatively defensive sector. Could be an okay position into those 156s. Not nothing. You don't want to necessarily hold it for that long, but certainly a lot of big purchasing going on here. Decent volume off, off the... Uh, quad witching but that's a lot of days of just constantly rejecting showing that there's some buying pressure there 20 moving average moving through it today so certainly one that's on the the watch tom uranium please yeah i agree with you on uranium ccj yeah so uranium has been incredible last couple of days this was serious trade there um, well done if you got that when you saw that bounce coming off where you were looking at the uranium, I put this in the room, actually. I put this in chart of the day about a week ago, I think, a week and a bit ago. And I said, like, uranium looks a lot better. It's, you know, it's flying if you pick the right ones. So these, these are big percentages too. Like, if you think about it, uranium off here is about 18%. And off this little resistance, it's quite strong as well. This is now in price expiration. This isn't the only uranium stock going into price expiration. Big volume in March, big volume, big pull, and you might think, well, it's over. I could see a pullback here maybe and then through, but this is now price expiration. If I'm not mistaken, this is the all time or at least a peak off many years. Yeah, it's a peak off many years. So previously we got some 3380 kind of action. We even got as high as 43 weekly big bullish hammer from the previous week as well it looks pretty good i mean sat around for a long time so i don't, I don't know if the uranium trades over yet i tend to think it's not dr horton says i am a doctor well you need to tell us a lot Al alias junior pltr a great accumulation and you know i hate pltr but yes you are correct pltr here it is yes it is accumulating. And yes, the volume actually was pretty big around earnings, obviously failed there. The one good thing about PLTR, the only good thing about PLTR, in my opinion, is that when it goes, everyone gets hyped and makes weird videos about it. Okay. Now, I'm not a fan person of this stock. I never have been. In fact, I cautioned against it for the very reason I always caution against these stocks. When they come out and they haven't been on the market for a long time, I always have a rule and I've got two rules. Does anyone know my rules? One rule is don't buy IPOs unless you got in early. Okay. 
Don't buy IPOs unless you got in early. You get monstered. You get destroyed. American IPOs, especially in tech, hideous. I might even bring up some hood action in a second. I've told many people on the stream for a long time about this and everyone keeps doing it. That's why I was a bit upset. But another rule I actually have is I tend never to trade or invest too much in things that have been around for less than five years. Now, you might say, well, that's pretty stupid. I do it because I want TA to be holding up. Remember, if your main advantage is technical analysis or data or any of these types of things, do you really have that much of an edge when you have no idea how this trade stocks technically? Does it trade technically? I don't know. I have very little history to go off. So if I have very little history, just think about it. You know, what this trade is, is it's really a fundamental trade with an X factor trade that if you understand something that the market is making a mistake on. Is that a decent breakout? I would say yes, it's decent. Uh, Tarun Bablani, thank you very much. Sorry if I completely destroyed your name there. Canadian, $6.99. Hey, Tom, missed these live streams. Could you have a look at CEAD, please? Closed offering at four fifteen, and I have warrants exercisable at 5 bucks. Agriculture play. Oh, I like agriculture. Let's have a look. C E A D. Mm, what? Closed at five bucks. Is this the right one? Okay, I'm going to assume it is farm machinery. So, what happened here? Warrants exercisable at five. All right. I'm not sure if, oh, this, what's this? This is, oh, it's a big split. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have very, what's weird trade on it, doesn't it? Very strange like this one. Is it small? Must be small. Oh, it's puny. That's why. Market cap 18.39 million. That would explain why I've never heard of it before. Look, TA won't help you much, man, on a stock like this. TA is mostly, I mean, you can tell, like looking at this stock, it, if that is it, it's kind of, uh, is there something else? Am I missing something here? Hmm. Yeah, it, it it's kind of ugly on the charts. I mean, right now you're looking at a base you would think. And you're looking at, generally speaking, whatever that's going on here, some big volume to do with whatever offer you're talking about. And if a breach is past 290, okay, that's going to be a fairly good deal, a fairly good thing for you. It's got a fairly decent run to 450. But TA is just not going to help you much. This is really a fundamental play. It's such a small company, you need to understand the fundamentals of the business. Uh, Chris Hughes says, Hey Tom, thanks very much, man. But I, I just, I don't know if I can go much more than that. Hey Tom, great knowledge info as always, mate. No worries, man. Uh, what trading platform do you use separate ones for the U S and Oz or all in one platform? Yeah, I do use a little bit of separate. However, I do have access to a platform that most people won't be able to get because it's more of a private platform. So you know, you need to be as sophisticated and all that stuff. Uh, I would generally look, there's so many out there from Australia. I guess Tasty Trades is a pretty good one for options. IB, IG, we obviously work with Pepperstone a lot in the Forex um, currency side and then and, and industry side, but they're all okay. And then they've, then you've got your CMCs and stuff. But yeah, you, you can't really have one size fits all unless you go with IB. And then the platform is just so hideous. Gary Sayani says, cost is a damn tank. So that's talking about Costco. Costco has done very, very well for quite some time. It's sitting at the resistance at the moment. Not sure if I'm too keen on that any other way. Uh, Matthew Clark says, URG has been a good uranium play for me, DNN2. Yeah, we can have a quick look at those codes. Let's just load them up. URG. All right. 
it's been very nice off there at that level there and obviously a good breakout originally let's have a look at dnn probably not as strong as some of those others yeah i mean this is again getting close to that kind of resistance here and if it does you're looking next up two dollars there's still big percentages here in the uranium place morning sherlock good to have you here Uh, Finken says no wheat, no IPOs. That's rule. That's absolutely. Now, if you're coming into an IPO, that's right around 12 months to 18 months is when you want to get into it. So where are we in advance of the devil hood? What an absolute piece of crap. Okay. And I will say that. Why? Because I called it a piece of crap on day one. You can go back and check. I did. I would have, someone would have been here on day one. Dave would have been here. I called it a piece of crap over here and I'll call it a piece of crap here. And now do I, am I excited about it? Well, let's mark out when, when it actually went live. So we have a rule of 12 months minimum. So 29th of July, 21. Hmm. Do I like it yet? My answer is no. <laughs> From a TA perspective though, guys, look, it's, it's finding base. I mean, you've, you've got $10. Obviously, there's some strong buying off that. It's not an absolute rubbish company. I don't know the fundamentals. I don't think you're really trading the technicals so much here as you're just looking for volume to probably remain or go up higher. And I think the catalyst to get this out of the doghouse is mostly going to be earnings. You know, you need relatively good earnings. So this last earnings pushed it down pretty hard. Still valued at, it's only valued at 11 billion. I don't know if that's cheap or not, but yeah, it's look, nothing much for me at this stage. You could say double bottom over here, Tom, look at this, it's going along. If you're feeling good about it here, I can see why you've got problems and then it could totally run. This is not anywhere near as bad as over here. I would say the capitulation trade as in the absolute horror show is done. And that's based on this candle. This candle here tells me everything I need to know. Someone bought hard during that day. They went nuts. They were like, yes, I'm going to get me some $10 hood. And that continues to reign true. So I think it's on base. Yeah. Someone said no soft commodities, no airlines. And Skater says Tesla will go crazy today. Crazy. Check out that in a second. Have we done silver? No, we haven't done silver yet. We have not done silver yet. Let's go through something was mentioned before about the old cyber securities. Where are my cyber securities? Here they are. So we have here the old net hovering around in the middle of its little range here. Net has a big resistance on it at 123. Nothing interesting here for me today. This one's interesting though. That's crowd. Good earnings result, which is positive in a market where it's declined. So let's just have a look at how much net's down from top to bottom here, where it went. Oops. So net's been consistent for a long time. Cybersecurity generally has. So from top to bottom, it dropped about 49%. From top to current price, it's down about 31%. And it does look like a pretty good candle on it yesterday. Now, if there is going to be a good announcement for it today, coming off Biden cybersecurity or whatever else is going on, that could be a catalyst based on this nice bullish pin. So if you're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, cybersecurity, I could think of worse than the current setup that we're seeing there. ZS is another stock that's been very good, currently got beaten down, even though it had good earnings. It's just a, uh, been a little bit overpriced for quite some time, held a lot, held a lot. And I think ZS is really coming through with some decent little double bottoming here as well. Another one with a bullish. So the two ones that look most bullish are probably ZS and crowd from these two. Luke Wild, New Zealand, $2. Can usually check UEC still strong. UEC, Uranium Energy Corp. Yeah, it still looks pretty good down a little bit here in the market. However, you've got that nice base. Like all the uraniums, they all look pretty similar. Big, big volume recently as well. Uh, breach of this, I would say, all-time highs from a technical perspective. Why? 
When a market stops just before previous peak, especially around 80%, and then it sells off, when it breaches, it tends to obliterate that previous high. Bit of a rule that I found is quite accurate. So when it does this pullback early, when that breach happens, it busts that massive. So yeah, if you get above, I, I think it's pretty good. Can I check end phase? Yeah, we can do that. Someone says the gap for Barber is huge. Yeah, Barber's up about 10, isn't it, in the pre-market? We'll check that out. How is our little mark going over here? Still flat. Oh, so boring. 0 0.08, 0 0.12. What is this? Where's this volatility? <laughs> it really it really wants to trick us and go in every direction it can feel like. End phase, uh, you know I like this company. Uh, I have this priced up pretty well. I do also have a little bit of, you know, I was thinking about this resistance, but I'm not sure that's even resistance anymore because it stopped before it. So yeah, really good buying off 158. If you're buying 158, congrats to you. You know I like the tan sector. Specifically, this is the stock to go with. It's the winner in the sector so far from the residential side. Also, I believe it's an American company and tends to do quite well. I've got these micro inverters on my roof. I know they offer more than that. But yeah, pretty damn good. 185, possibly you know the 260 play could be here thanks to government. I would say 220 will be a struggle for it though. So if you're looking at it and you're thinking, where's my next target? 220 could be a, a big thing. How much is that up now off the base? 61. Jeez, they're big percentages. <laughs> Happy days is just catching up. He says, PDD is not about toilet paper. It applies technology and e-commerce to help hundreds of millions of very poor farmers in China. Probably more meaningful than most other stocks. There you go. Yeah, I'm just joking, Happy. Don't worry. Somebody explained it to me and said, oh, it only sells small things like toilet paper and that's all it sells. <laughs> so I laughed at them. I said, oh, really? Uh, hack is cyber, I think. Hack is certainly a sector for cyber. You can also look at bugs. So if you go to bug, global cyber security, bug is also an option. PBW looks like Wyckoff accumulation. Let's have a look, PBW. I'm always interested in a bit of Wyckoff if it is good. Oh, this is the entire sector. Yeah, it, yeah, for sure. The sector is really strong. Belted, very hard. Clean energy ETF here. That is a just like the tan sector. That's a big sign there. Mass selling. Huge rally, big volume, big increased volume recently. And look at these, big trading. New peak, obviously issues coming up, 68 and the next. But yeah, an underperforming sector that, that should start to improve. I mean, this is down fairly hard. Had a great rally on it during that period. And if you're looking at it, absolutely. Bug has negative PE. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All these cybersecurity companies are mostly in scale. And if you want the top cybersecurity company, it's pretty easy. Somebody said before, Microsoft. Yeah, I mean, it's very bullish, Microsoft. If you think about it, Microsoft is my number one moat company in the business. This is my number one moat company in the world. I can't even fault Microsoft. I don't even know how to stop it. You know, I was looking on the app store and I'll tell you this. I was looking at all these app store things and reviews. I can barely find bad reviews about their apps. I remember when people hated them with a passion. You know, it's, it's pretty incredible how good it is. I mean, I check it every so often just to see what the social is like, but it's good. They got the gameplay, the game kind of info system that they can do. Game Pass is going to be big. A lot of people don't see that yet. I think they're going to make a fortune off it. They're going to scale it massively. It's going to be bigger than Xbox. Let's just say that. It's not about Xbox. It's about Game Pass. Game Pass, selling software rights. They own great, great content. I think buying Activision was a great play by them. My personal opinion, obviously. But uh, yeah, this is my highest moat company in the business. Uh, I just can't see a bad thing. If you're doing bad, increase the price of Office 365 by $1. 
cool. Who's going to stop using it? Can your business that you work for stop using it? I doubt it. Netflix, you can stop using. Netflix, you can cancel. Very hard to cancel this beast. It is a beast. Uh, Tom, can you change the time frame? Oh, it says here one day on the watermark. Zalif. So it should just be here. Uh, Will M, $5. Tom, can you have a look at Drive Shack Inc. DS. DS is a top golf competitor which merged with Callaway for $2 billion in 2020. Take a flyer on it. Drive Shack. Okay, thank you very much for the five dollars here. Ah, it's been some decline recently. Interesting. Not not very healthy, is it? Pre market, it's up, but no clear direction. And that's the problem you've got with some of these stocks. Look, there's just no clear direction here. Is it basing? I would say yes. Could it even be a Wyckoff? Absolutely. Definitely an accumulation kind of play here. Do I like it? Not at this stage. Now, if it breached through this 150 area, 145, I'd be more excited about it. What I would want to also see is go to the weekly and I'd also want to see some form of nice candle pattern coming in. Now, I don't mind all these wicks because if you close a weekly above, what's that telling you? It's really made a decision. Volume. Mm. Yeah. Volume is, it's okay. Gary says Microsoft was hated because of Windows 7 and Vista. Yeah, Windows 7 was all right. Windows 8, I thought was crap, but I was told the other day it wasn't. <laughs> you know where Microsoft was really hated? ME. ME was the worst. Razor wire laser beams, $10. Morning, Tom. Looking to take profit from high risk stuff and go big into IBM long-term. Wow. The AI computer side guys I know say IBM is way out ahead of the Kathy Wood AI stonks. Thoughts on entry? Wow, really? Hmm. My problem with IBM, I think you might want to look at it. Oh, it's so tough because IBM has so many different behemoth, whatever you want to call it, terrible things that have been going on for years in it. I once almost bought this. Actually, in fact, I did buy it. Buy it. When did I buy IBM? There was a time I bought it. I think it was over here. Sometime in 17, 18. And the reason I think I bought it in September of 17 was I thought that they had some technology AI back then as well. I remember I did it and I thought, oh, maybe they've got a crypto play. I think they were with Stellar Lumens or something. Anyway, it was a stupid idea. I don't know what I was doing. And yeah, I mean, I, I got out and made a few bucks, but I realized that actually what the hell was I in this thing for? It's a massive crapper because when you look at the business, there's so much death in the business. The business is like this. They've got like one department doing well and then like 50 departments declining. And that's one of the problems I have. Look, you could be right, Razor. You could be right. If you're looking at it from a current price action, Lightning Bolt currently in action here, but you can you can definitely see, yeah, that massive declining. There's a reason I've got this on the chart. It's been declining for years off these peaks. So if it breaches, that could be a good sign for you. If it gets past like a 140, 145, I think that would be relatively strong. The problem with this is even if they're doing well in one area, They've got so many bad areas. My AI top pick would probably be something like an NVIDIA or something like that from a technical perspective. The winners continue to be generally winners. Thanks very much, Mansour. Appreciate that. What's your opinion on Aussie, BHP, and Rio? I've loved them for months, M months and months and months. My opinion on them currently, it looks like steel is breaking out at the moment. And obviously, Ore has done well over the last 24 hours. Lucas Reese says, thinking about NVIDIA short thoughts. Mm. 
So NVIDIA was one of the ones I bought up as being around resistance. Tough short always on this one. I haven't shorted it many times. I did short it over here. Obviously, I was talking about it down to here. Why? Got the tweezer. Very tough stock to short. What, it's just such a, it's it, it's a beast. <laughs> and retail like it a lot. And And I always struggle to short against retail because it's kind of like, you know, shorting, would I rather short a really crap stock that no one's ever heard of that's bad? Or would I like to short the behemoth? And I think a lot of traders, like there's a few people right now making a huge deal about, and I made a big deal about having to crack it in NVIDIA over here because it's not often you can short a quality company. It's uh, it's tough. This is the area that you would be looking at it from the short perspective, probably wanted underneath yesterday's long leg doji. And then where are you going to take it to just here? You know, the problem with shorting this is you're shorting quality. Shorting quality ain't easy. It's very tough. Shorting is hard anyway. If you go short something that's crap, it probably will work out. If you short something that's good, you'll probably get beaten a lot. Yet humankind, the way we think, we want to beat the system. How often, I'm going to ask the chat this, how often have you come in and you've you started trading and you think, hey, I'm going to kick everyone's ass. I'm going to go against Apple or I'm going to go against one of the big fang stocks and I'm going to sell that down. And I'm going to tell all my friends and everybody I know, I shorted Apple and won. <laughs> How many of you have felt like that? I'll put my hand up. I've done it. The other day I was going on about selling NVIDIA on the tweezer because to me, it was there and it was a trade, but I am very seldomly short. I need to know a real reason. So that would be something I would say. Gary saying he just in regards to the uh, golf comment says, top golf is king. So it would be hard for DS to make a move on that. Gary Sony says, Kramer loves IBM. Stay away then. Get out. And uh, Mark, by the way, says they're having a conference today. They are. They've got an investor call today where people will do things. So, yes. Ma Wallach says, me, I shorted Tesla. I kicked some ass. Oh, okay. Yeah, shorting Tesla. Another one that's quite tough. Burry really tried to make his name on that one recently and he got brutalized. Tesla 927 at the moment. So I'm not very happy with Tesla. I'll say this. I will say this about Tesla. They have absolutely useless customer service and they suck. Okay. That is what I'm going to say. I bought a car. Have they called me? No. Have they called me for the final deposit? No. Do I have delivery? The automation's fine, but the actual discussion with you is disgusting. Very, very poor say it right now. I'd be terrified if I was relying on aftercare service from what I see so far. 928 pre-market. Believe me, any other car company never did this to me. Only Tesla. So 945 or this 940 area, big zone for Tesla as we know. Breach of that, huge. 1000, let's go possibly even, you know, back to some serious highs. It's a big deal getting through this zone. We we know that that was that was the final kind of step. I wouldn't mind for it to to come back down any of these prices, any of these big supports here, the 890 900 area, the other one the 850 the double moving average. Yeah, pretty bad. Uh Muhammad Omay says they are bad. I sold my Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Finkin79 says Tesla customer service is garbage. No, about, no doubt everyone agrees on that. Oh, good. Well, there you go. Sandola77 says I shorted Hood and made a bundle, picked up a HBO Max subscription. <laughs> Very good. That is actually true, Huey. Huey brings up a good point. Sounds like every other tech company, pretty much. Uber doesn't even have customer support. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? 
there are some good tech companies, but it is true. I'll tell you who's improved. Google. A lot in the last two years. I've dealt with Google for years. They've improved a lot. And I mean a lot. All right, let's look at this broad market now. Unfortunately, the indices aren't really moving too much. So we don't have too <laughs> that much to discuss in the indices. It's going to be a trap in the morning, you would think. A trap or a continuation, but I would wait for the market to tell you the true direction today. It's not happening here in the pre-market. So it's just been more of the kind of Chinese tech. I don't know why, but SE always trades up with China. It's so funny. It's actually not a Chinese tech company, but anyway, the market loves taking it with it. I guess it's because it's in Asia, but it is pretty hilarious that SE always trades that same way. Block down here a little bit. Let's take a look at Square. Yeah, so with Tesla, just to finish up, big resistance, this 940. Look at it all. Big support at 890, previous resistance, going to act as support, and then our next support, 850. They're the key levels that I would be watching from buy, buy sell kind of resistances. Let's take a look at Square. All right, so Square came down, not quite to the full box we wanted, but it came down to this little area here and bounced off it. I think yesterday I was talking about it going down like almost 10%. Ended up going down 9.42 from the peak. So, yeah, quite interesting how much it did end up falling. It found some buy pressure. But in this box, anywhere around these areas here, you would think it's still in pretty good accumulation, big volume. This is another one of those ones where, you know, it had a really good earnings result or at least better than the market, the street thought. And then we got a double bottom. The volume has remained very bullish for a while now. And that's what I'm looking for at the moment with these stocks. If I'm buying these weird tech stocks or any of these things, I'm looking for ones that based with some form of high volume. And that's showing me that someone was buying them and they might huddle. And I want them to huddle. I don't want them not to huddle. You know, here is Twilio. It's probably not as good. Let's have a look at uh, Etsy. Okay, it's interesting. Have a look at shop. Uh, shop has a lot more volume on it. That was pretty brutal in the last day. Big, big rally followed by a massive just short off. SPLK. It's had volume on it for a while. That's why it had a good day trade on it yesterday. This was a brutal hold. But if you could hold, it's done well. All the way back up. PLTR. Decent volume in comparison. Not bad. Recently, okay there. Not, not fantastic. DKNG is doing really terrible. This is just a burner of cash. You know, I'm actually convinced. I know we've talked about this a lot. You know what I actually think the online future of gaming, gambling, whatever you want to call it is? Can anyone guess what I think is actually going to win in this space? I'm not sure it's DraftKings. I know a lot of people thought it was. Darth Vader says NFTs. He also did I miss BTC? E, well, I mean, you haven't missed it. I think the crypto is just kind of breaking out at the moment. Probably Ethereum sitting the closest to the breakout. If, you look, if you're thinking about it, Ethereum is probably the best one from a TA perspective. Matic also. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of cryptos. But if you want BTC, yeah, breached a few hours ago. I put it on Twitter. Gary Sony says pen. Uh, Kevin N says shop got whacked again because Google said they are eyeing their business model. Oh, totally. The win it look, here's the new world order. There's going to be a few new companies that take over, Kathy Wood says. And that's I agree. But the new world order is actually the old world order. Things that were winning before all this pandemic are still winning and things that have more data than everybody else are going to win. This is a data play. I also don't like social media too much as a, as a play for the next decade. We've seen how often the moat can get destroyed on those companies. So yeah, I mean, I still love Google. I still like Amazon very much and I still like the king, which is Microsoft. 
If I was picking those top, I'd go that with a smattering of NVIDIA from a TA perspective. TA, TA, TA. Pen, not DKNG. Okay, so I actually think, I'm not sure what pen really is. Isn't this just a standard gaming, gambling casino? I, I think it's crypto, crypto gambling, guys. Crypto gambling just smashes it. It's already massive. And I just think it's going to do very, very well. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't buy the damn stocks, but crypto gambling companies, they are absolutely obliterating it. And I don't know who's in the crypto gambling space, but I can tell you one, which is like stake. Oh my goodness. They're not necessarily in sports gambling or anything. I don't even know if they're out. They are, but they are destroying online. That guy actually lives in Melbourne. Woo. Damn, he's a he's a beast. If I could have bought his company two years ago, a little portion, I would have gone all in, as they say. Because you know what he's doing? He's managed to somehow get all these streamers that have 50,000, 60,000 people watching them play slots. I mean, who would ever think it? 50 to 60,000 people watching someone else play a slot unbelievable marketing super cheap kevin says make some new friends tom what do you mean so i can get the into those things like steak yeah that'd be crazy gary sony gives his ones he says the new world order is magnet c microsoft apple google nvidia amazon tesla CMG. Chipotle Mexican Grill. Is this even that good? Chipotle Mexican Grill. I know it went nuts, but is this actually that good? For Amer Americans, tell me. Is this this is it good that good? Or is it bad? Let's have a let's have a fight over the fast food. About half an hour away from the open, by the way. US 500 currently up 0.24. Sitting right on our annoying level of 4480, right on the resistance. We'll check them out a little bit close to the open. Okay, this is the feedback. Gary says, bro, I will die for the Chipotle. Thoughts on NKE? I want to check that out. I noticed it was going pretty well pre-market here, up 5.17%. Mm, I mean, is it, is it, was it a predictable move? That's why I always ask myself. I don't think it was. Maybe someone will disagree, but I can't find a statistical edge on why I would have been in on this. Look, volume recently has been quite good. Maybe that was a teller of oh, earnings. That's why. Okay, it's earnings. Yeah. I didn't look at the earnings, so I don't know. I, I I wouldn't say you have a statistical edge based on the current price action and, and earnings. Who knows? 5.1, is that good or bad? I don't know. Sometimes you don't know. People do not like the Chipotle. Too salty, they say. Oh, yeah, CMG is whack. Have you watched the South Park episode for it? I think I have, actually. <laughs> all right so the general concept here is people are not loving they are not loving the chipotle too much i would say or whatever the hell it's called chipotle is what sherlock holmes calls it matt so he's, i would say 33 percent likes and the rest dislike matt says have a chick-fil-a in canada i can't get chick-fil-a over here I always love, I always love starting fast food wars in the chat. It's pretty, it's pretty funny. You guys always have a massive war over it. I like it. I don't like it. Uh, I think the point is, is that no one likes White Castle. There we go. Not that I've ever had it, but I've seen the film. Didn't look very good. Burger looks like crap. Is it crap? I don't know. White Castle certainly did not impress me with the look. I look, I looked up a picture of it online.
let's just say I was like, what is this? Here are some White Castle burgers. I mean, what what the what the hell is this? This guy likes it. No, 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 no. I'm not getting behind that one. Kevin says he worked on that film. Did you really? <laughs> People are hating on the white cars. Look, I never had it, guys, so I can't tell you. But that that little image didn't make me happy. They are sliders, okay. Brian says White Castle is great if you're drunk. Okay. It's not necessarily the best thing. Willow Puff becoming a new member. Thank you very much, Willow Puff. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. B says White Castle isn't real food. Well, I thought that in the image. Look, if you want to know the best, it was when McDonald's had Mayor McCheese. I mean, let's face it, Mayor McCheese is a legend. All right, so silver, gold, people are asking what's going on here. I've got something to tell you guys, okay? Gold and silver do not trade the way you think, okay? They do not like high rates. Bad. High rates are bad. So if you have high interest rates, it's not good for the old silver and gold. The only time it is good is during stagflation. They are not in that way an inflation-based correlation, okay? Okay. So at the moment, they're copying it because rates started going back up. Why did they start running again? You actually would have seen that uh, gold and the old silver were going up while rates were actually coming down. If you look at the two-year, for a little period there, during that period of niceness for gold, we actually saw rates coming down. Specifically, the 10-year actually came down to the 8th of March. Uh, and you might notice in gold, Around 8th of March was the peak. <coughs> anyway, yeah, I'm not, not look, I, I've said for a bit, I haven't been the biggest fan of the old golds for a couple of days now. The reason is it hit my big resistance as well. GDX hit my resistance. Now, you'll notice that the stock is still trading up while gold is going down. Yeah, the stocks can do that. The stock is currently still under price compared to where gold hit. Gold hit an all-time peak. 2070. GDX hasn't hit that peak, 4th of August. It's still underneath. It's still undervalued. So if you believe gold's turning, the stock is actually the better way to own it. Marco says, yes, 1% predicted rates with 8% inflation is bad for the PMs. Yeah, it is. So look, we look at the gold. Let's look at the gold. I mean, it needs to hold above 1896, 1900. I can't see a reason to be in it just yet. If I could, I would talk about it from a technical standpoint. This is not showing us the signs. It's like, a, it's like bleh, I don't know what I'm doing. Here's the problem with gold. 90% of the time, it sucks. 10%, not even probably 10% of the time, it's glorious or good. Well, actually, it's, let's say it's tradable 10% of the time, 90% of the time, it sucks. And 2 or 1% to 2% of the time, it's glorious, okay? And that's the problem with gold. It's a currency. That's what it is. It is a currency. Think about logically. If rates go up, what happens with gold? It costs me more to actually store it. Yeah, if I have a billion dollars of gold, my my cost of holding gold just went up. Well, that sucks. Damn. Gary Sony says, "What are the chances of fifty basis point hike in the next two meetings?" With Powell's comments, I don't know. Powell just doesn't seem to pull. He just says a lot of stuff and then pulls out the weakest thing I've ever seen. I mean, he was way too late to pull it back. I told you, a person in the street. You could find someone eating White Castle in the street and say, hey, bro, can you run the economy? And he's like, yeah, man, I can do that. And he would do a better job or she would do a better job than the Fed because be like, they'd be like, yeah, well, you know what? I'm going to tighten. They don't care about their pockets in the market. They'll be like, I just want to get some more White Castle. So they would do a better job than the Fed's doing. The Fed is doing a bad job. 
I, I, I just think they're doing a bad job. I mean, you look at Draken Miller, he almost like literally is having a, a heart attack on what the Fed's been doing. He hates them so much. And I consider him one of the best traders of all time, if if not the best trader of all time. He makes more money in bear markets than bull. Guy's a beast. So the White Castle person could do better. Now, if you're a bull in the markets and you say, oh, but Tom, he made it so I made lots of money. Well, yeah, but he's destroying the economy. So you've got to say, are you all about the capitalistic, you know, I'm going to make some money short term? Or would you rather that the US stays and remains a strong country? That That's what I think is the argument. Anyway, we'll get off that. So will Powell increase at 0.5? He damn well should. Will he? I don't have the faith. I mean, you just basically get what all the economists say and just, it doesn't matter. I mean, everyone's going to be wrong if he does do it. All right, let's have a look at this pre-market. Do we have anything we like? So SE continues to do pretty well. We'll check out that one on the charts in a second here. Got the iron ore steel companies doing pretty well as, as well. A few banks coming through. On the bad side, nothing much. I mean, the market hasn't moved much here. Wish it had. It has not. Let us continue to scroll through. What else did we have? So we had the the steel companies that were doing their little thing. We've just got the John Deere, which broke out the other day. You got the Triple M down in the weird support. Big accumulation down there. Not sure about Cisco, but certainly been sitting for a while. AAP was another one that I had from a daily perspective, looking for a breach out. Let's check out some of the other ones that we've had in accumulation recently. TDOC. God, TDOC. No. SPLK. Yes, that was all right. PLTR wasn't too bad at all. ArcG. Hmm. Yeah. It's all right. It's on support today. Breached back above, which is a fairly big deal. Let's take a look at the weekly here. Okay, so it was a good weekly close. Yeah, I think it's finding support, the old Arc G. Volume's dropped off a bit, though. What do we got? Arc K. Yeah. Tan today. Just sitting around resistance, as is N phase and SE, the one I want to look at. So SE is an interesting one because it's completely beaten down. Very beaten down from its peaks. Obviously, was riding high, three sixty one. If I remember rightly, they made a bunch of, they made everybody pay like three hundred bucks, did a capital raise. <laughs> that was pretty smart of them. Well done to them. Double bottomed recently. It's at resistance. It's got a big trend line down. So I'm looking for it to breach through here to give uh, potential extra action. Net stuck in the middle, Craig. Don't forget Pal is coming today. Is he coming today or is he coming? Where are we, Pal? Where are you, you little sneaky cat? Uh, he... Is he coming today? I thought it was other people coming today, probably telling us more truths. Pal not coming on Wednesday, isn't he? Gary says, Nancy Pelosi is probably the greatest trader of all time. Yeah, she's pretty good. I think that's really wrong. That's pretty funny. Some of these comments always get me. Uh, Boo Boo says Moz, NTR, and CF fertilizers are on fire. Yeah, the fertilizer trade's been crazy. So uh, CF. Who the fertilizer trade? Wow, it's been nuts. There's the 24th. That's where we are right now. You know, Moss, another one. We definitely did put these in in our private community. Mosaic, big movements here. 
huge movements. And that percentage wise, I mean, you're looking at as of the 24th, it's going to have big ramifications of 40.95% with just massive volume. It's certainly been where the market's at. Good little pickup as well here if you got it. Double little bulls. Tweezer, love the tweezer trade. Tweezer is one of the best. Could this be another Max Payne week? Yeah, I mean, it could be. Uh, look, I look around the market right now, and the reason why I'm saying, okay, maybe this is going bullish is because you look at some of these things. Here's XLY, consumer discretionary. It's gone bullish. And a few market, minutes till the market's go to XLK, broken the downtrend at resistance, 154, you know, base again formed. So th there's a lot of reasons, you know, when you think about it, that this could go long. You've also got that uh, period of March, April, which tends to be good. And we have the overlay, which I put in the other videos, which if you look at 2000 and maybe we'll go back just quickly to 2008, 2007, when you think about it, that Jan, Feb, March period, check out this overlay. If you, I, I don't have it full. But if you actually look and you go back to, let's go NDX, go to a weekly, scroll back in time, a journey down history lane, yeah? Look at what happens. So we have that, if you actually overlay these, which is pretty funny, you overlay like a a January into February kind of run on the NASDAQ coming through 07. Started a little earlier, December, yeah? Goes down into March. Has a massive rip rally. Well, I think it's pretty massive. Rally from bottom to top, 21% rep rally. That's why you, you kind of expect things to go pretty crazy sometimes, which then destroys itself in June which then leads to bigger problems. Now, if you think about a standard midterm year and you think about what a standard midterm year does, they all tend to do very similar things. Drop at the beginning, have a rally through one of the best months of the year to be in the market, April. And it's just, just, just stats, yeah? These are stats and data into May, into June possibly, and then we might see some weakness. Now, here's some interesting things. First term, midterm years, not good. Taxation, I guess, catching up with the market as well. Second term, second year, new Dem Prez. Also very bad stat coming off May. Actually horrible. <laughs> these are, these are, this is crazy when you think about. It. And then you think Democratic president midterm tends to also be really weak here compared to all years. And all midterm years also tends to be weak. Now, you can take any of these stats. I could take the last 10 years or the last 20 years. They all tend to work where it's got this rally in the middle with a drop at the end. You know, it's, it's really wild when you think about it. So do I believe in this rally? I think this is the year of the trader, 2022. Do I believe in the rally? I can't be long-term bullish here. I'm always long-term bullish market, but I can't be long-term bullish on this rally. Why? Because we have, it's insanity. The bond market didn't sell off for no reason. If you look at the bond market, LQD, sorry. Uh, the corp bonds didn't sell themselves off so hard and all the bonds aren't just getting flogged for no reason. They are getting flogged because we have a problem. Powell cannot contain that problem. And the markets are staying irrational. I mean, we've got a two-year yield at 2.187. It's up 3.21 this morning. Wow. Yet they can still say they can still say irrational. So you know what would scare me a lot? 
from the perspective, not really scare me, but definitely would be would be probably in the rule book. We go bullish. We bull into like a May, into maybe a June. Imagine if we made a new all-time high. Anything's possible in this weird broken market. So if we have to just trade the technicals. That's why I say it's a trading year. So you get the May kind of turn off here. I could actually see something like this occurring later on the year. I mean, what do you think? What's the community think? Is that going to happen? Or you're all just like, nah, man, this is going all-time highs. I find that hard to believe. Eight minutes till the open. We'll have a look at what's doing well coming in here. Someone says here, what is this? What would scare me is October, November last year. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I'd be scared by that. I mean, the market obviously dropped and then rallied, but it's very similar. You know, this is a massive downward trend. That's another downward trend. Well, I think that actually was like this. And I remember we said we had to go bullish here. There was no choice. We went into a good, remember, it's very similar. October into November are historically great months for the S&P 500 and for the market. April is an amazing month for the market, especially March into April. Now, you know what's happened a lot recently? There's been no sell in May. Now, you always hear people talking about it. I, I just smell May this year. I, it just feels, it feels bad, hey? It feels bad. But data would prove that this would make the most sense. In fact, every correlation I've seen being metric by rich people that understand the markets better than me, even me, they're all like correlating it to all these other years. And almost every single one of them all has rallies leading through April into, into drops later on. It's bizarre. Mohammed al Masari says, I find it weird the NASDAQ is breaking out with US 10-year being belly bullish too. Yeah, look, we have to make sure as traders that we, we all have biases. All of us have an opinion. Your opinion is as good as mine. I'm not going to say mine's better than yours. It's not. I can only trade the price action right now. And I have to, the only thing I can do is I've got, you know, you've got your kryptonite kind of long, or you've got your kind of, you know, cryogenically frozen longs, yeah, potentially, whatever that might be. You have to remain optimistically bullish. But with your trades, you don't have to do that. So are you going to be, somebody that says, oh, I think it's going to 20K and I'm going to hold my longs to that profit because I'm trading on a six-month basis, I think that would be dumb. When will earnings reflect consumer sentiment? Well, that's a great question. Let's have a look here. How long away is Apple's earnings? Ah, May. Hmm. Interesting. 42 days, Apple, Amazon, 37 days. That will show a lot about the consumer in America. Remember, 46% plus of Americans. I don't know if anyone's like this. Is anyone here that like this statistic? Have $0 in their bank account. That, that terrifies me. I don't understand how that's possible. 46 Brian says, I think you're right. Seller may go away. Yeah, it's very, look, you will find everyone will create seller may go away. And for every year, I always say, ha ha ha, it's a lie. You know, that's just some made up thing. This is the first year that kind of makes sense. And the main reason is earnings. It just, look at it. It's just sitting there. End of April into May. We're going to start seeing these things offer earnings. And if they don't, especially these big ones, I'm not scared of this one so much, but especially these big ones, if they don't present good earnings, will the market like that in a hyperinflate, in, if it goes bullish here? I don't think it will. 
Fox Fox says, don't forget it's a midterm year as well. Well, that's the data we're bringing up. I'm just kind of, you know, we're, we're looking at a market here that's sitting at 4480, guys. So, I mean, the US 500 is sitting at resistance. There's not much I can do. What can I talk about? It's not that I'm just kind of spitballing here about what I think about the market because I'm not trying to be biased. I think bias, like, unfortunately, biased opinions of the market is what gets you really bad. And whether you watch a YouTube or, or you go on Twitter or like I've, I I fell into it the other day, there was some Mart nasty bear like going crazy, pulling stats out that looked so terrifying. And I was looking at it. I was like, yeah, maybe I won't pull the trigger, even though most of my things were saying it's time to buy. And then I had to wait till the next day. And I was like, ah, oh, stupid, nasty bear. Three minutes to open. Yeah. All right. Let's check it out. So US 500, here it comes, 4480. We're going to be at the resistance ahead of the market open. We are up. We also are seeing US two-year, 10-year up. So the market doesn't seem to care about that right now. Makes sense. It's become irrational. We're trading the price action, not the thing that makes sense or doesn't make sense. Mohammed says, it's amazing how raw price action can really guide you in tough times. Yep. All right. Let me just quickly tell you what the bonds are doing for today as well. Let me just quickly check out over here. Uh, bonds actually slight positive on my indicator anyway, which is not, not great positive, but slight positive. Copper obviously up on most of the ratios makes sense. So you would think that tech would be, other than the Asian tech, it would pretty much be not the strong thing today. Today is probably going to be at this stage, you would think minerals and other things. LGD as a pure bond indicator. LQD, sorry. LQD is a pure bond indicator coming in 0.31 down. So it's definitely weakening here a little bit. So 4480 resistance, two minutes to go, plenty of market action. Let's just quickly load up that little scanner, have a look here at the pre-market. So coming in strong, Alibaba, Chinese companies in general doing very well here. Nike must have had good earnings. SE doing all right. Negative stocks, Okta, Dexcom, a few of the others, Block, et cetera, not down that much anymore. And we are at resistance heading into the market. So one of the things that you're going to be wanting to look at today is how does this resistance react? So this is the futures, but the real market hit 44.80 and sold off it yesterday. So if we get a breach with a sell-off, I think you can probably come to your own conclusions there. It's going to be a fairly big thing if that occurs. You're looking for the false break. You're looking for the break out with the retest. That's the type of way you have to trade these markets when you come into a close open flat scenario. Derek, four with a million zeros, four Hong Kong, $25. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, hi, content. Um, could you take a look at Rock, Roku and Riven for me, please? Uh, yes, we'll just quickly slot this into the side. Here we go. We're going to open up and ding, ding, ding. We've just opened. So it's going to be, we'll just quickly do that first, actually. Let's have a look what the NASDAQ's doing. So we've got the 4480 being touched immediately. So how this reacts to this zone, very important. S&P 500 going to be the lead, I would say, for the day here, showing us what the market truly wants to do. US 100 down 0 0.05. Let's just quickly load up these. I uh, will do yours, Derek, in just a minute. So let's just quickly get rid of that for a second here. So we've got the percentage change. What came in bad? Okta came in poor. Everything else mostly down. This is 24 billion plus companies. And still the Chinese stocks are holding their opens. SE dropped 1% almost immediately there. JD, Baidu, all those types of things. Scroll down through. Gold getting bashed, 0.6 down now. Palladium holding better because it's obviously separate. Still 44.80, market being boring. Flat, pretty much across. Google, Amazon, still probably the two better of, especially Google at the moment, the two better of the... Uh, the fangy kind of stocks just because they got the splits on them should hold up better due to that. 
even if there is some kind of weird crash. So here we go. We put the pressure on the top side. And the question will be, can it actually hold this break? So if the break happens in the first half an hour to one hour, you're going to want to see whether it actually holds that 15 minute, five minute. If it does and then breaches through, then it comes back down. I think there might be some buyers at that level. Now, if the breach happens and fails immediately, you've probably seen one of those, those weakness points. So the market's kind of false broken, similar to the previous day over here, which led to some good shorting through the first part of the session. So you're right there, currently rejecting 44.80 still. It's a pretty key zone, you can really tell. But uh, these markets, they test your patience. US 100 going up to resistance sitting around 14,450 is the resistance for US 100. Again, testing that resistance here early. Remember the first hour is the retail hour of power. All right, let's do Derek's. We've got Roku and what is the other one? Ribbon. Thank you very much to the 600 plus people joining us. Appreciate you guys. Roku over here, 121. All right. So I'll have a quick look at mine. Oh, what do you know? All my little weird accumulations are all green. Little BK. Not much green. <laughs> but they're all little weird green today. Might check them out later. Uh, Roku now, yeah, very beaten down stock. Now I'm not going to profess that I think this is worth much because I don't, but, uh, some people believe in this company. I'm not an expert on it. Volume is currently not impressive. Downward trend is certainly intact. Daily 20 continues to be a big issue for it. I would like kind of like this to happen. And then if that happened, you get a little lightning bolt. That would be fantastic. And then obviously you're going to have big problems around here as well. But this is certainly a stock that it, it must have failed in its earnings. I don't know what it did, but that, that's that been a bit of a teller to me on all these hyper stocks. The ones that went up after the earnings and then dropped, they were the buys. The ones that dropped in the earnings, even at these low prices, remember these were low prices, that's a bit of a worrying sign. And the price action is currently showing that. So downward trend, not so good. I'm not not a huge fan, but if you're looking for a catch-up play, yeah, it, it, I guess you could scale into it. And Ribbon is another one that's down pretty brutally at this stage. It's gone up, but the price action for me, just it just doesn't look good enough, Derek. You know what I mean? Like I feel, I just don't feel momentum here. It's not 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 the momentum, not the bases that I like to see. New core coming out with 1.2. Triple M just floating, doing nothing. All right, let's scroll through here. So a lot of fairly small moves. Square's gone bullish. 1.9. Net crowd. Crowd, one we talked about before, little little bull hammer on the previous one. Maybe that's going to be where some money's at today. It looks like this this uh, cyber security stuff may be playing out a little bit. Uh, Airbnb. Hmm. Now, let's go back over to that market because it's all about the indices at the end of the day. Indices lead the rest of our stocks generally. So 4480, absolutely boring. It is doing nothing at this stage. Even the volume is probably weak here in the morning. No worries, Derek. Uh, it's all right. I, I wish I could give you better news, but I mean, from a TA perspective, what can I say? Ah, so far, I haven't looked at that for a while. So here's a little breach out. Still going to be interesting to see whether this is false or real. Let's check out the five minute close. Okay, so five minute actually was underneath, and then now we're out. Now we'll tell in the next five minutes what what might be going on here. Let's check out SoFi. That was actually one I saw on accumulation base a while ago. So let's check that out. 
Ah, just keeps failing this thing. How interesting. So it went to eight bucks. I didn't even know. I don't follow this. I mean, it has my rule on it, which for a long time, I mean, my standard rule, which is I hate these kind of stocks when they first come out. Oh, I don't know. I think you fall in love a little bit too much with the stock. It That's something you've got to stop doing if you can help it. If you like SoFi, you can invest in it. If you like it, that's what you're doing. You're investing in it. Is the volume up? Absolutely. It's been much higher recently, which is cool. But if you trade this stock, you're gambling. That's just how it is. I mean, does everyone agree with me? Is that a chart that you go, oh, I have a statistical edge on this chart? What kind of statistical edge do you have? And this is not, not for you, Sherlock Holmes. I'm just saying in general, is it a statistical edge? There goes the markets there up 0.4. Still 44.86 though. So it can come down. Let's see if this rally can actually hold through. And if you're worried about it, most likely if it does hold up for the first hour, you'll get a pull back through the session. It'll touch that high. You can make other decisions. You don't have to really FOMO that much in these markets, I don't think. <clears throat> yeah, that doesn't look like me, you know, a, a really a really great technical kind of stock. At the moment, look, I don't know. Maybe that is a base. Let's see which stocks are going best here. Hypers seem to be doing the best. Hypers are doing quite well. Obviously, the barbers and all of that will be doing all right. Let's load them up. Let's check out the percentage change. Is that 15% that I saw there? What is that? GBWS. 12% on the barber. 12.35. So the Chinese stock play has been relatively good here. Makes sense. I mean, you know, when the government gets involved, it's going to drastically reprice the asset. We've seen that plenty of times. Not sure about from investment grade quality. US 100 now at the peak. 14,480. So we'll go to five minute. I want to check the five minute chart. We'll bring up both. Bring up the five minute US 100 as well. Check my bonds. Yeah, bond, my bond indicator is bullish for the day so far. Obviously, it's a little bit different to the ones that you guys are looking at, but one point, okay, so 0.18 up. So that's that's compelling. It's not broken through the previous peaks yet, which is something you do want to see. 44.91 now. So it's chopped up. Still no five minute even close yet above. We're coming in on that now. So first five minute close should break through and have hold. Then you'll look at the 15. Little flaggy. Now, if that flag played out and you said, okay, well, I'm going to take that flag distance. The distance is this. So probably about that 4,500 really. What I like to see here though is how it reacts next. So when you get a breakout like this, usually the market will try to come down, retest the high. And if you get like a 15 minute pin here, remember if you get a 15 minute rejection like that and it follows through, oh, you just all got trapped. That would be, that's a brutal. Tesla 1.2, yet yeah, 9.32. It's fine. Tesla hit 9.40, not yet. Okay, so suddenly the market's selling off a little bit here. Again, 15 minutes. I'll stay around for the first 15 minute candle. I'm just interested. Eric says, thank you for the live feed today. No worries. But I think you can probably see why I'm suddenly like, you know what? We're going to have to go bearish. Uh, sorry, bullish. 
on the on the market for the next couple of months potentially here i mean obviously price action will do it but data said so you know from the start of the year we said one thing and unfortunately i couldn't make a video about it because i was on a conference but we talked about it sell the rumor by the fact or by the news that was the concept coming into Powell's speech. Did he say anything? He just blathered on about tools and being able to combat inflation. Does anyone here believe that Powell can truly combat inflation? Not when it's up where it is. This this is not, not combatable. The only way to combat the inflation is basically allowing the stock market down. Eli says, even worse is a full green 15-minute candle followed by a bearish engulfing. <laughs> That's true. But the thing with these, I like you mean like over here and stuff. That, look, the thing with opens that I usually like to do is if I have a trade direction, then that's fine. And if I don't, then I'm usually looking for traps. And you don't, and the problem with looking for traps is often you sit for like an hour to an hour and a half and you have nothing to do. I just find traps very statistical advantage you're not always going to see a trap. I mean, at the moment, it looks like this thing's going to close up. And then you're looking for, hopefully, some form of like little base fat and pull off later on the session now, if that's what it does. Can I take a look at AMD? Sure. AMD flat. Remember, traders or investors out there, not every day, not every time do you have a statistical advantage. You might think every day you can trade. You can trade doesn't mean you're going to do well. I think on any decent day, usually there's a bit like 20 to 30 stocks that you might have some serious advantage on. Otherwise, you're looking for your replicatable system. So look, I like AMD like the rest of them. They've all broken their downward trends as far as I'm concerned, double bottom. This one's not tracking the market though. So it's actually behind. So if you did like an AMD versus, let's say you did AMD versus uh, SPX, for example. If you loaded that up, you'll notice that AMD has actually underperformed the SPX from a ratio since November last year. And it's super underperforming at this stage. So I, I'm not not loving what I'm seeing on AMD's price action. Market's currently up 0.6-ish, 0.5, 0.6. Lucky I don't predictively short. Remember, this is not a time where you're shorting rips or anything like that. We cautioned against that. The other day, we, we hope for pullbacks to allow us to get better prices, but really you're just picking stocks up as they're breaking out, as they're making their moves. That's all you can do. You've seen it all before. Markets go rally, they go ballistic. It can be hard to get the pullbacks. But you do not short this rip rally as far as I'm concerned. Over here, hey, yeah. I was saying it's short all day. You short whatever you want, if you wanted to. The bonds were saying it's all bad. All of a sudden that changed. Doug Moore W says, locked in my plus 10% gain on Alcoa. Congrats. Let's have a look at Alcoa here. Ah, at the resistance. Fair enough. Market's now 0.44. So I guess I'll probably leave you there, guys. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to float around and do its little thing. We've got the 15-minute close. Let's have a quick look at it. The 15-minute close, fairly bullish here. Now, little sell-off. If it comes down to this point, you're going to have to make a quick decision on what you want to do, whether you like that or you're not. Maybe you're on one minute chart or whatever you're doing. I mean, this is obviously more scalping than anything else. And if it does what it did yesterday, which has ended up closing the hour bearish, I would pay strong attention to that.
from a TA perspective, because if you get these types of things occurring, ooh, brutal. Let's just be very nimble here on the session. Hey, Tom, can you please look at IWM? Mm -hmm. We can check it out. 207.17. Not too interested in IWM until we breach the 210. Stupid IWM, unfortunately, burns quite a lot of people over here that didn't have stop losses. That was unfortunate. It ended up turning into a Wyckoff. But, you know, it's another thing. You look at this and you think, okay, is that a Wyckoff? Yeah, that's a perfect Wyckoff in the end. Then even when it went bearish, so far anyway, has the Wyckoff paid full dollars? Not really. So it just shows you bearish side indice shorting is very tough. You can never really get exactly what you wanted. QQQ telling a different story than the US 100, uh, than the US 500. What do you mean? What's the story? Should be the same story. Oh, look at them. They're starting to push down. Little NASDAQ down back to the 14,431. Hmm. New still doing well here, by the way. John Deere, Triple M up one. All these little crappy things do it all right. All right, the S&P hasn't come down to this level yet. Anyway, look, we'll leave you there. Probably looks like it's going to do it. It's a little hanging man. If we close the five minute down underneath here, that'll be interesting. But uh, check out the hour close, guys. That's going to be pretty important. If it's like yesterday and it follows through, bad, okay? It's bad. If it looks like that and then it follows through, bad. If it doesn't, all right. Maybe we did break for the day and we're going up. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Catch you for now. Appreciate it and appreciate the support. Give it a like if you enjoy. Obviously, if you want to come through, I will make a quick announcement. Some of you will not like this. Uh, it is unfortunately the best way I can do things moving forward with my time and the way that things work. So I'll load it up just so you are aware. So what I'm going to be doing as of the next, you know, couple of months is we'll be doing basically Monday. Uh, this week, I'll do the live streams Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But I want to change up the way I do content. So I'm going to continue doing, obviously, my daily shows. I'm going to obviously do, you know, a, a pre-market live stream every Monday. And then I'm just going to start doing pre-markets for a shorter period for, uh you know, the, the private community just to add the extra kind of like flavor in there a little bit, a little bit different. A few of you won't like it, but it is what I'm going to do. And I'm not stopping my daily videos. I'm not stopping my general content, but I will stop doing so many live streams um, for the public. There's a couple of reasons. And one of them, frankly, is YouTube itself. If you live stream a lot, you kill your channel. You kill your channel. So I'm just telling you that right now. It destroys the channel. Horrible. So it's going to be good for a lot of people. And uh, yeah. Uh, Skater says, are you not trading? Look, I'm in Australia, man. If I traded on stream, that would be a disaster, bro. Believe me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. Unfortunately. Terry says, like beat Kevin. Yeah, it kills it. Well, me, Kevin did it for a well, he probably did for a whole bunch of reasons, but yeah, I mean, I guess so. It does kill your channel, so you got to be careful. Bro, live stream on TikTok, you'll get viewers. <laughs> I don't know how to use TikTok, man. <laughs> so, anyway, look, it'll just be better on me. I can produce better content. I think we're going to take the, next, the videos to the next level. If you have, this is the daily videos. If you have feedback for me or you're thinking, oh, hey, you know, I think you could add this into your daily videos. Maybe you think they're perfect. Maybe you think they could be better. I'm always striving to improve them. 
So uh, always let me know. By the way, NASDAQ now only up 0.1%. Look at that one hour. Let's check out that one hour. Okay, interesting. Nine minutes till the close here. The cooking show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why does it kill your thing? Because when you go live and you have videos running on your channel, it cuts all of them and stops pushing them. So what that means is that all of your live, all of your live streams burn your, um, your main videos. And the reality is the live streams aren't as big as my main videos. So it's kind of, uh, yeah. How are you going to see the private videos? Uh, so the private ones technically are part of the private community. You're always free to sign up seven days if you want to check it out, but that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to constantly do the Monday. I'll keep announcing it. Um, but that's just what I think is best for the channel moving forward. But I always do appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, it's not it's not going to stop. I'm going to improve the daily videos. I might even push more videos this year. Uh, so videos like maybe talking about educational concepts, secret trading tips, all sorts of cool things. But this is a decision that I think is best for for everybody. Why don't you stream on Twitch? Uh, Cause you've got to move your whole audience over there. It's not that easy. Milos says, can you explain what you teach in private mentoring? Yeah, the private mentoring I think is basically my entire mind of trading. It's a bit different to the normal courses. Uh, effectively, there are certain things that you have to trade or you have to train people live with. Basically it goes through a top down of the entire economy. I would say it's pretty impressive. Um, I even offer a money back guarantee on it. And the only reason I could do that, you know, after the first session is because guess what? I, I really back it. It's, it's top stuff. Like it's not anything like what you hear on YouTube from me. It's like the next level of how I conceptually think about markets. The lead indicators that I use, the macro stuff that I do, um, and how I do that simply. And I like to think of it like this. If you can simplify and use KISS principles on everything, so keep it simple, stupid. You know, this took me, well, I'm still developing it constantly, but it took me 12 years to get it up, like to get it to the level it is now. If you can keep things simple, think about how much data is thrown at you daily from me, from everybody else on YouTube. All this data is getting chucked at us. We're confused. We have no idea. So if we had lead indicators and certain things, certain cyclical concepts that we could follow plus data plus TA and bring it together without having to do much work, wouldn't that be better? I think you've got to ask yourself the question of whether you want to always be scalping every single day in the markets, whether you want to be day trading every single day, or whether you want to uh, do those things when the best time is to do so, when you have that statistical advantage. And what I do is I teach the full top down all the way through big cycle theories. I grab other people's cycle theories and smash them into one so they make actual trading and investment sense. But it's taken me a long time to get there. And luckily for me, um, I've done this for a lot longer than most people because I've obviously been doing this 14 years. So not too bad. I'll give you one hint. Let's just say that the US 10 year is more important than you think at predicting many, many things. If you ever think about Warren Buffett, and I have a way of predicting what the US 10 year is going to do. Um, but the US 10 year, if you ever consider what Warren Buffett says, and remember, these are the best traders of all time. They, they are literally stuffed. Well, he's an investor, but Draken Miller, anybody, they all look at the US 10 year. What they don't tell you, they just say, oh, look at the US 10 year. It's so good. Kind of like what I'm doing now. But they never tell you how do you use the US 10 year? How do you spot the US 10 year change? Is the market even accurate at predicting the US 10 year? These are questions that you ask. And when you start to understand what's going on with the US 10 year, you can predict certain movements on indices, on sectors, and on certain currencies. It's pretty damn crazy. Appreciate that stinky piggy. Oh, 
Thanks, Deborah. So yeah, that's what we do. And it, it look, it's a little bit different to what you think, but it's also simplifying the market down. So you don't have to sit there. And I, I would encourage at the end that you never watch my stream again. <laughs> because the idea is people are, because they know that I use similar, I use certain concepts and they can kind of see between the lines. But but really the idea is that you don't want to rely on anyone. Why would you want to rely on me? I could die tomorrow. So could your current mentor. So could your current Twitter person or YouTuber or whatever. You have to learn it for yourself. It's the only way that you can do better. But mine is not, it's not a get rich quick scheme. You're going to make it in one day. I mean, the reality in my life is that it takes time. But I've, I look, I trained a guy the other day and he might even be here. I'm not going to mention names, but the poor guy, I mean, he made one and a half million dollars last year. And you think, ah, oh, that's pretty good. Well, since 2020, sorry. One and a half million dollars is a lot of money. That's incredible. But what do you think he did? He dropped the one and a half million dollars and ended up with probably a negative bank account balance. And then the problem is what he might have to do is pay tax as well. There's a big story of that that I shared the other day with this poor guy that, you know, he's out half a million dollar tax bill. So that the issue is when you make it like crazy, you tend to lose it all. When you make it consistently, you tend to keep it all. And remember the rule of Buffett is rule number one, don't lose money. It's like fight club. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. <laughs> All right, let's have a look just quickly at these markets coming into the end. So the hour, two minutes away, looks fairly solid. Oh, that's not bad. Five minute there. Double rejection. Yeah, very nice. Oh, well, it looks like it could be a rally here. That's actually not too bad at all. Little little bull pins. Whoever found those, very nice. Sneaky, sneaky. Inverted head and shoulders, Dave says, yeah. Well, it's certainly it's certainly a big resistance. And you can see that that little sell-off there currently being reversed fairly nicely for scalpers. Don't forget rule number three, follow the TA. Yeah, that's true. Two minutes. Yeah, that was that was a good spot and a little double tweezer there. Mm. Now make a new high. Come on now. Do it for us so I can finish up. Make a new high. We must will it. You know it'd be the ultimate injustice if they did this to you and they busted the low oh that'd be brutal it's actually a fairly solid setup though those types of things tend to tend to do better than not statistically that is when you get those double rejections do i live in australia yeah i do So one hour closing now. Oh, they came out of the gates for it. They were hungry. Little algo bot wanted it bad. It was like, come on now, up, above. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Come on. Ah. New high. Yeah. All right. Woohoo. Nice work, pin bar trader people. All right. Good luck, everyone. Have a great day. That was uh, very fun to watch there. Oh, look at it go. Sneaky dogs. People are going to annihilate me tomorrow now. They're going to be like, Tom, you said it put back. Oh, I said, I hope it pulls back. <laughs> I don't know. But at this stage, certainly the day trade here especially that nice little reactionary trade. Not bad. You got about 0.4% off that so far. So not too shabby. Well done, everybody. If you're in, I guess, well done. And if you're not, meh, it's all right. There's another trade on another day. Remember, 
The one thing about this market that's almost assured at this point, almost, my opinion, lots of disclaimers, is that based on what we're seeing in this market, it's sick, okay? It is sick, disgustingly sick. So it can remain irrational and do its little dance. But at some point, midterm years tend to catch up with these things, yeah? Just remember, at the end here, hmm, I think that's a damning chart. And I can pull Seasonax data and a bunch of other things to show you that it's pretty damning. So, uh, yeah. Very good. Catch everyone. <laughs> Harry Ryan says, Tom's your excitement makes my day. Hey, <laughs> I did it for you, Kevin. Don't worry. That's why I went, yes, yes, yes. I could smell it coming. It was, it was going strong. What do you trade down there? Never trade US stock the time down there. No, I trade US stocks. I like US stocks. I mean, obviously, I am going to focus on Australian stocks if I can get action on them. But you've got to remember, Australia stock is not good. So it just you have to modify your style. Like when the VIX is super high, I might come in for opens. When the VIX is low, I'm never coming near an open ever. I would use the close instead. I don't need the open. The close is better for the swing, for the even the day trades if you're going to hold it. Well, when I say day trades, holding it for a few days. So, so my strategy is based completely off being lazy and doing analysis, you know, for a few hours a week and then recognizing trends jumping and then basically holding that sector or holding that portion for a while. That's what you're looking for. All right. Uh, the, you know, the scalp kind of trade is cool and it's fun, exciting, but it's incredibly stressful. That was a solid little setup though. Whoever said pin and put me back over to it, well done. Thank you for that. Almost up 1% now. All right, now I'm going catch up. 